Well, good morning to you here in church and to those of you who are watching on Zoom. It's good to see some smiling faces looking back at me on the screen. Give me a wave. Show that you're interested. Do you know only one person, two people have waved in church at me, so it shows you're not very interested. Shuff said to me when I came in, I'm not sure. Oh, hi. Yes. Hello, Mark. Carl's given me a double-handed wave. I think he's, his arms haven't start, stopped waving since last night. Uh, Shuff said to me as, uh, as I came in, he said, I wasn't very sure where you were going with your sermon. That's why he said, I'll pray for you all. <laughs> but actually, if I give you a bit of an idea, there is a link between the two. I'm linking David and Jesus. David in the Old Testament and Jesus in our New Testament. Most of you know the story of David. If I was to ask you, tell me one thing about David, I think the first thing you'd most probably say was, he killed Goliath. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. You've got who I mean now, yes. He killed the giant Goliath. David, who became a favorite of King Saul, a close friend with Saul's son, Jonathan. But Saul was also worried, worried that David might try to take his throne from him. And on one occasion, you remember, he turns on David and tries to spear him to death by throwing a spear at him and nailing him to the wall with the result that subsequently David goes on the run. And it's only after Saul and Jonathan are killed in a battle against the Philistines that this 30-year-old David is anointed king over Judah. Lots of intrigue and political infighting goes on. If you want to read it, you can read chapters 2, 3, and 4 of 2 Samuel, all of which brings us to the opening verses of today's Old Testament passage. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, we are your own flesh and blood. You were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns and the Lord said to you, you shall shepherd my people Israel, and you shall become their ruler. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king. So there we are. A potted history recording the start of David's rule as king of Israel and Judah. And as I was reflecting on where David was at the age of 30, I was struck again by the striking similarities and the differences between David and Jesus, both of whom were about the same age. 30, when they came to the prominence and rulership of their people in Israel. For David, for David, there was a real sense of acceptance, a sense of encouragement. The people were behind him. Our reading ended with these words, and he became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. We also know from our reading of the Old Testament that David goes on to defeat the Philistines. He brings the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. But we also know that from this point on, he faced many challenges, some of which he came through with flying colors whilst with others, they show him in a very poor light. You want to know, read the story in the Old Testament. 
But for David, there was one constant knowledge. The knowledge that he had been chosen by God for this task. A constant knowledge that God was with him. You can see the beginning of that link with Jesus. The knowledge that God had chosen him for his task. And the constant knowledge that God was with him. Which brings us to our gospel passage that John read. Sorry, that uh, Canon. Now, is it, I don't know how you pronounce his name. Gideon, or is it Gideon? Gideon, right. We've had this discussion at home when we've been praying for them every day for our friends in Siongila and Tunga. Is it Gideon? Is it Gideon? We'll call him Gideon. It was lovely to see that new face, that new link with our friends in Siongila and Tunga. As he read that passage from Mark chapter 6, the opening verses of which recount how Jesus finds himself unlike David, where David was welcomed and praised by his people. We find in those opening verses, Jesus finds himself rejected in his hometown of Nazareth. Let's put this into context in the same way as we put David's story into its context. In chapter 5, we read how Jesus restores the demon-possessed man in the region of the Gerasenes. This man was called Legion, you remember, because he had so many. 2,000 demons possessed him. And you'll know the story. How Jesus sends that herd of demons into a herd of pigs. And the pigs go racing down the hill and straight into the lake. It's not surprising that the people ask Jesus to leave their area, which he does. The beginnings of rejection, of opposition. And this is then followed by Jesus healing the woman who'd been hemorrhaging for 12 years, and immediately followed by the healing of Jairus' daughter, again 12 years old. Jairus, who was one of the leaders of the local synagogue. But we know from our reading of the New Testament that these events were beginning to raise up opposition to Jesus. But the news of these healings, the news of the miracles that Jesus had performed, must have gone before Jesus, preceded him. Otherwise, why would the crowds have come out to hear him so often? So that by the time he arrives in Nazareth, one would have expected the people there to have welcomed him with open arms. He was a Nazarene. He was one of their people. Just as David was one of their people. He would have expected them to have rolled out the red carpet You would have expected them to bring their sick and needy in their hundreds. You would have expected them to be longing to see Jesus perform a miracle. You would have expected them to have been so excited as the people of Israel were excited to welcome David as their king and their leader. But no. No. The exact opposite happens. Mark tells us that Jesus, he says, could do, could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Not the glorious homecoming that Jesus might have expected. All of which leads Mark to record that. Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. Jesus was amazed at their lack 
a thing. So yes, there are great similarities between David and Jesus and their calling of leadership. Their anointing by God. But David, David had an experience of acceptance and encouragement. Whilst Jesus must have had a sense of rejection and discouragement at this point in his ministry. I want to suggest that those feelings must have been shared by Jesus' disciples. Imagine you'd walked with him, you'd talked with him, you'd watched him perform those miracles, you'd been excited by the promises that he'd made. And you come to his hometown and they don't want to know. They too must have been more than a little perplexed as to what exactly was going on. They will have needed something to lift their spirits, to re-encourage them, which is exactly what happens in the second half of our gospel passage that Gideon read to us. Jesus sends them out two by two. I wonder how they went. I wonder how they felt. Called to, to do Jesus' work, to do God's work. And yet they just seen Jesus rejected by his own friends, his own community. How would they be accepted? Would they face rejection and discouragement? Or would they, like David in our Old Testament passage, would they experience acceptance and encouragement? They must have had a sense of anxiety. Well, as we heard, when they returned, they did so encouraged. Encouraged because they had been able to preach the message of repentance. And the people had listened. They'd been able to drive out many demons. They'd been able to anoint many sick people with oil and heal them. Their ministry was being endorsed, confirmed. They will have been encouraged and they will have come back rejoicing. So what do we learn from the experiences of David and of Jesus and then subsequently the disciples? And how do we apply this to our journey of faith today? For me, the most important message is that when we look at David, when we look at Jesus, and when we look at the disciples, we see men who responded to God's call to leadership. We see men who knew both the highs and the lows of ministry along their journey. We see men who followed God's call to service and to leadership, despite their own failings, in the case of David, great failings, despite their disappointment and opposition in the case of Jesus. Despite their anxiety and their uncertainty in the case of the disciples. And we, we 
who are called by God to be his witnesses in our world today. Yes, this has been difficult for us as a church and as individuals over the past 18 months. But we, like the disciples, are called, I believe, to step out in faith. To know that God has called us to his service. To step out in faith as we in time welcome our new families and children's worker. As in time we welcome our new incumbent. As we step out with them together in the tasks that God has for us as his church of St. Lawrence's here in Bidon. And in so doing, in so doing, we too will face times of acceptance and rejection. We too will face times of encouragement and disappointment. But what I want to suggest this morning is that what is important is that when that call comes, when we find all the restrictions of COVID lifted, when once again we can worship together here in this building, when once again we can be together at 9.15 and 11, when once again we can be reaching out through our cafe, through our schoolwork, through our face-to-face -face work with Energy and Energy Plus. And once again, we can be reaching out with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the love of God. When we are ready to accept the challenges that God will lay before us, in the coming years. I believe the challenge for all of us. As we step out. In that new beginning. Because that's what it will be for us. It will be a new beginning. What will it be like? Will there be acceptance? Will there be rejection? Will there be encouragement? Or will there be discouragement? Well, all I do know is that we are called like David, like Jesus, like the disciples. We are called to be faithful, to respond positively to that call. God called David to serve and to lead his people of the Old Testament, the people of Judah, the people of Israel. And he did. Oh, he made mistakes. But he responded to his call. God called Jesus to serve and to lead his people. And yes, it wasn't easy. My God, my God, why have you forsaken? The cry from the cross. But Jesus responded to God's call. And God called the disciples to step out in faith. And they did. Not just when they went out two by two, but after the resurrection and the ascension, as they took the gospel message, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles, as they reached out beyond the boundaries of Israel, encompassing the Middle East, as we now call it. And eventually that gospel message reaching us here in this country. The disciples down the generation stepping out in faith. Not always easy. Read Paul and you'll see the rejections. The opposition that he faced. 
but you'll see the joys of blessed ministry there too. And so Jesus calls us, I believe, his people here at St. Lawrence's Biddulph to trust him and to step out in the faith that he calls us to, to witness to and in the knowledge that he will provide for our needs. Yes, I say again, yes, there will be times of discouragement and rejection. Just as Jesus and the disciples experienced in Nazareth. But there will also be those times of encouragement and acceptance. Just as the disciples experienced when they stepped out two by two to proclaim and to heal. This is the joy and the challenge that will soon be opening up in a very real way to you and I in the near future. This is the joy and the challenge of living out our Christian calling. This is the joy and the challenge of being his 21st century Christians. Now, yes, during COVID, but also post-COVID, as we reach out to our community with the message of Jesus. May we do so in the sure and certain hope of his resurrection. Amen.